Are you unsure when to use items, sub items and checklists in monday.com? Well, on this video, I'm going to explain how to set up your monday.com account correctly based on my experience working with more than a hundred clients. If you need help with a custom implementation, just reach out to me. My contact details are in the description below. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the best way to learn when to use items, sub items or checklists are with a few examples. And just to let you know, there is no right or wrong. Like there are many different ways to build this, but there's a few best practices and a few limits that you need to be aware of. So let's look at some examples. First of all, <clears throat> what is an item? As you can see, this is an item in Monday, this is an item in Monday, and this is an item in Monday, as you might have already known. If you then click here, you can actually open sub items. So in this case, my item is a YouTube video, my sub item is a research, record, edit, and publish. It's all related to the YouTube video. Then we also have checklists, and checklists can be seen by looking at an icon like this, so you know there's a checklist assigned to this task. As you can see, zero out of four are checked. If I open it, you'll see the recording checklist. So let's dive a little bit deeper on why and how and how this works. So in the case of a YouTube video, and it's a very simple example, you always have a few subtasks, like you need to do a few things to do that YouTube video. It's not like the task is create a YouTube video, someone just does it and boom, it's there. No, you have multiple stages. You have the research stage, recording stage, the edit stage, the publish stage. And it might be that each of these stages require a different person, a different deadline, different priority, um, different conversation. And that's why sub items are super powerful in this case. Because if you were to put everything here, the only place where you can put it is either in columns. So you could say, for example, well, one column would be uh, uh, edit and then would, for example, say done or not done. But there's no easy way to communicate about editing in this case. So you can click here, you can communicate about the whole project, but maybe you just want to communicate about the editing phase or you just want to send some videos back and forth. Uh, it's like, hey, do you like this version of the edit? Do you like that version of the edit? And it just becomes one big cluttered cluttered environment of, of chats about many different things. And that's what you don't want. So in the case of creating a YouTube video, I would probably uh, use an item as the YouTube video and sub items as the tasks. Because you can communicate about each individual stage, give each individual stage someone responsible, a status, a deadline and of course any other column that you want to create. What also is super helpful is when you do this, you can leverage checklists correctly. So maybe when you do recording, you always have a checklist of things you need to do before you start recording. Such as check if your hair looks good, check if your microphone works, check if your lights are turned on. It's all things you can check before you actually start doing the recording. This is also very helpful and only well, it's not only possible if you connect it to a subtask, but it's just not ideal if it's in this one huge list of you know communication about everything. Because here you would see like 10 messages about the research, five about the editing, 10 about the recording, just too much. It's not, there's no overview. That's why it's better to keep them separated from each other and use sub items in this case. So that's the first example. Um, and one thing to note in this example is that Items can have their own unique columns. Sub items can have their own unique columns. But as you've already maybe seen, checklists don't have such a thing. So you cannot really connect a checklist to a date. Like if I were to create a new checklist, clicking here in this button, I can say, for example, add Patrick, uh, do this. And I don't even know, does it work? Yeah. Well, it doesn't even tag the person as you can see. So it's not ideal. Like you cannot tag people. Um, of course, you can do something like Patrick to do and then make a checklist. Test one, two, test one, two, test one, two. Stuff like that is definitely possible, but it's just not ideal. It's a, you know, you start running into some limits that are not great. Um, on top of that, because checklists don't have status columns or columns in general, you can never say when someone is stuck on a task, 
notify its manager, for example. So keep that in mind when you start playing around with it. I highly recommend that you just uh, create one of your tasks and put it in Monday yourself and just use a few different options and you know try it as if you're actually going through that project and actually communicating about it and you'll quickly figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, but let me show you another example to you know share more of what's possible. Well, let's say we're going to build a new website. And as you can see, this website has 65 subtasks because there's a lot to do with a website. Like a website is a huge project. You have a front page, a home page, a contact page, about us page, a web design, a logo, a domain name. There's so many things you need to do. And in that case, if I open all those subtasks, as you can see, some things are, are, are subtasks that ideally require another subtask. So, for example, um, research competitor websites. Of course, you can put that in a file, you can put it in a, uh, an update. But maybe what, what could be helpful is if you could say, well, we want to research competitor A, B, and C and have a subtask for each of those competitors, for example. That's not possible right now because Monday doesn't, at the time of recording, support sub items of sub items like there's no extra layer of sub items but spoiler alert this is something they're working on and this is something that will be released in 2025 so that's good news but for now we don't have that option yet um, so we need to figure out how should we build this and as you can see there's like a huge list of tasks including things like this create a home page design create a home page development create home page text like copywriting there's just too much there's no overview it's very hard to tell like where are we at with this project so in case of a, a website it probably makes more sense to create a whole new group and call that group website and say for example well we have a home page and that home page has the task to you know do design for the home page development for the home page uh, development well with another typo and for example uh, um, uh, launch we would have subtasks for each of those or competitor research competitor research maybe those subtasks would be well we want to research apple and we want to research microsoft well you get the point it makes more sense to have sub items and it makes it way easier to see what the status is of each because now you can just say okay home page where are we at let's open it ah okay we still need to do everything. So it's a very, very interesting one. And in this case, I think it makes more sense to use multiple items rather than sub items. But of course, yeah, it's still possible with sub items. Just keep in mind, there's a limit of 200 sub items in one item, um, which yeah you can run into if you have a lot, a lot of sub items. So good in, uh, to keep in mind. Um, one thing that I would like to share though, is that one of the features I love a lot about sub items is, and this is especially helpful with, for example, this type of approach where you have a home page and want to see what the status is. If you have 10 or 15 pages, you don't want to open each sub item to see, okay, where are we at? You just want to see the average, like where are we at with the whole, you know, with all the sub items. And the great thing is if you click here on the three dots of any sub item column, you can click on show summary on parent item which will create, in this case, a status column. And you see the status of the sub-items combined. So let's say the design is done, working on it on development, and this is not done yet. Maybe we'll call a, we'll add a new label, we'll call it to-do, like that. Now you can easily, oh, let's just refresh real quick. Now you can easily see what the status is of those sub-items and therefore have an overview of everything that's going on on the sub-item level without opening the sub-items all the time, which saves you a lot of time. Um, these are two very interesting examples. Then when we look back on something else, like a client onboarding, very similar example to the YouTube video, not many tasks, I would use sub-items and maybe some checklists. Um, uh, a pro tip that I would re really like to share, let's say this is your client onboarding board and you always have the same tasks for your client onboarding. You don't want to be creating these four tasks every single time manually, right? Because people will forget it. People 
you know, will make typos, all that kind of stuff. So what you can do is automatically create those sub items. You can do that by going here to the top right and clicking on automate. If you then click on add custom automation, we can say when an item is created, create a sub item and then give it a name such as um, send onboarding questions. And then we can click here to create another. So we could say, for example, um, send welcome email. Just two examples, right? If you then click create automation, what's interesting about this approach is that you can um, just create an item and then we'll automatically create those sub items for you. There you go, it's done. So now if we were to create a new task, let's say client A, it will automatically generate those sub items for us. So as you can see, automation is running and there you go. Task one and task two show up. So these are some interesting examples on when to use sub items, when to use items, when to use checklists. I personally don't use checklists that often because sub items and items are way more powerful, but usually it's a combination of boards, groups, sub items and items, which will really bring your project to life. Well, if you have trouble figuring out what, what to use, it makes total sense because I had a, trouble, a lot of trouble with this as well when I just got started. Just because you don't know what the limits are, you don't know where you will run into some problems. And if you've seen it countless times, you'll know exactly what the problems are. So I would recommend creating your own project in a board and playing around with like different setups. So use sub items, use items, use checklists and see what works best. Um, but do some tests before you roll it out to the team because you don't want to change this too often. And if you really need help with it, you can always reach out to me or another expert, of course, to, uh, yeah, to learn more about what works best for your situation. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll answer all of them to help you as good as possible. For exclusive money.com tips, you can sign up for my free newsletter in the description below. And if you need help with a custom implementation, my contact details are there as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.